Hello everyone, welcome to automation community. In this section, we are going to discuss about Omron PLC. Before entering into the topic, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. So let's see about Omron PLC. So Omron is the leading brand. If you see in our uh, you know industries, most of the companies are using a Omron PLC. So it is a well-known brand in our India also. So there are dozen of manufacturers of PLC as we have known. We have seen so many brands in our previous sections, right? So one of the leading maker of compact PLC for machine automation is Umran. Umran offers a flexible line of scalable industrial PLC controllers for use in single machines are as part of large mission control installation. So let's see more about Omron PLC. So the structure will be like this. This is similar to our components of uh, you know PLC. The the you know the generalized architecture of PLC. So we have an input module over in the left side, and we have output module here, and all the input devices are connected with input module. And output devices are connected with output module and we have a CPU and uh, inside that we have a processor and memories and we have a software for that and communication and power supply module will also be there so if you see we have more signals like we will be having uh, you know digital signal so input module is the one which can able to collect all type of signals right so suppose if your project is having only digital input means you can go for digital input module or if you have analog input then you have to go for analog input module and if you have a pulse input means you should go for the pulse input module like that input modules are differentiated into three types according to your application you can pick whatever you want and same thing for outputs so these are all the types you can see for digital the first one is on off state this is nothing but a digital ios and for that you have a input devices push button some switches sensors relays these are all will come under digital inputs and outputs you can see indicators lamp just a display relay contactors these are all digital outputs let's see about analog ios so we have a transducers or transmitters and all will come under a analog input and analog output you can call vfds inverters and all will be the analog output control valve these and all will come under an analog output and we have a pulse ios also so encoders and uh, photo micro sensors are pulse input Servo motors, pulse motors are pulse output. So, depends upon our IO type, we will be choosing the IO modules. So, in our Omron section, we have a modular type PLC, compact type PLC, and rack type PLC. So, I hope you are familiar with modular, compact, and rack type PLCs. So, we have a Omron models. You can see here CJ2H, CJ2M, CP1H, CP1L, CP2E, CSIGH, CSID. So, these are all the types of Omron PLC. And these types are classified into three types. So, if you see a modular PLC, inside that we have CJ2H and CJ2M. So, if you, you can find the IO capacity, the total number of IOs we can add is 2560. And the program capacity of 400k steps. And this is having 600k steps. So, in, in our previous se section, I have mentioned that PLCs are you know classified depends upon the size 
and that is mainly depend upon number of IOs, communication protocols and memories. So here also they are categorizing the PLC, Omron PLC type into these three section. Number of steps, I mean number of IOs and the program memory. You can see the compact type PLC capable of having 320 IO points. Points is nothing but IO and this is having 180. Rack type PLC are having more. 5120 points you can add. So depends upon our requirement we will be choosing the type of PLC we want. And you can see here these are all the integrated type PLC. In a single kit everything will be here. In a modular you have option to add IOs, IO modules. And in a rack type PLC also it, it, it also like modular type PLC and you can add expansion rack also. For example, in this rack you have a 10 modules. Since your project is big, you have to add one more rack means you can able to add. So those options are given in rack type PLC. That's what the IO points are more. So this is a compact or integrated type Omron PLC. CP1L. So we have a input ports and we have output ports and we have a indicators so indicators for uh, you know uh, troubleshooting we will be having a led indicator so it will easy for us to troubleshoot and this is similar to the previous slide so it is showing the graph of maximum ivo capacity and functionality so the rack type PLC are having a maximum IO capacity and some modular type PLC. So this is the section where you can attach your nearby IO module. It's like a plug-in type. You can attach the uh, module which you want to come next to this. You can plug in to this port. It's a rack type. So CPU is there, power supply module is there, IVO modules are there, communication module will also be there. So Omron PLC, rack type. And as I have already told, in a rack type, you have an option to add expansion rack also. So in one rack, you can add maximum 10 IVO units. And for one rack, you can add three extra expansion rack that's what here they have given expansion rack three maximum so you can communicate between these racks using the io control unit so using this io interface unit you can able to communicate with your main this will be the master this is the main rack and from this we have added the three expansion rack it's a rack type PLC and it's come to, the, come to the communication part. So how, what are the types of communication we are going to use for writing or loading the program. Writing a program using a software and after that to load the program or uh, to make the communication between our CPU and our field instruments. So these are all the types. The device net. Ethernet IP, Ethernet CAT and Profibus, Profibus DP, serial communication. So here they have given CS1, CJ1, CJ2. These are all the types of Omron PLC. So these are all opt for device net. So if you choose any one of this type, you can have an option to use this device net communication and Ethernet IP. And uh, this is Ethernet CAT. This is Ethernet for control automation. Ethernet for control automation. So this is for NJ and CJ2. For these two types, we have this option. So this is also similar to Ethernet only, but we have 
response time is more comparing to ethernet so that's what it is dedicated for the control automation purpose and we have a profibus uh, dp and cs1 cj1 cj2 see device net and profi profibus dp so all these models are having device net also and profibus dp also so profibus dp is also uh, you know important protocol uh, people are people started using in in industries so it is used to operate sensors and actuators through centralized controller and this is open and uh, this is independent network standard and we have a serial communication so using uh, you know rs232 we can able to make a communication between plc and devices so that's it about the communication protocol so we have a option to connect revo remote io connections also so using a uh, terminals we can able to using the remote terminals we can able to communicate rplc with remote devices also so you can see here we have a remote terminal and using that we are communicating with io devices input devices output devices and all and this is ethernet so for loading and uploading a program we will be using the ethernet and between uh, uh, controller to controller also you can able to make communication using ethernet and this is ethernet for control automation so you if you have uh, some drivers and you you want to have some faster response time means you can able to use this ethernet for control automation protocol and we have a profibus dp so all sensors and uh, you know the sensors and uh, uh, output devices will be in the factory floor and you will be having plc in the control room so the distance may be maybe in some companies the distance may be more so in that case to reduce the number of wirings you will be using the profibus uh, you know dp protocol this is this is about the serial communication so now serial communication plcs are very less in our previous days we were using uh, you know all uh, plcs were coming with uh, rs232 port nowadays uh, uh, all at most all plcs are coming with ethernet port so serial communication is reduced so this is one more type of uh, you know omron plc so when you have some uh, servo motors to control some motion control application you are having means you can go for these series of omron so you will be having one of the module and after that you will be communicating your drivers this will be this uh, separate servo drive to communicate with uh, you know uh, plc want to communicate with servo motor means you have to use the respective drive servo drive we have to use so nj series will help you to you know communicate with the servo motor in omron and at last we come to the software what software we are going to use in omron which is cx1 software so cx1 software it will allow the user to build configure and program omron plcs hmi and motion control systems and network using only one software package so cx1 is one complete package in that you have plc and hmi and motion control software also so you can use this one pack to program all these three and uh, this is the os version so you can install in windows 7 8 and 10 so plc means you have a cx programmer switch box utility and cx simulator these three are used for plc and for hmi we have a cx designer and there is one more option will be this scada that is cx supervisor 
and for motion you can use cx drive cx motion and position and all for process we also we have some softwares in nomron and this is for the network so that's it about introduction to omron plc so in this i have few more slides about syncing and sourcing inputs these are all the types of uh, you know inputs later in the later section i'll explain this so i hope you have understood about omron plc and the types so i'll meet you in the next session before that kindly like and subscribe our channel thank you